everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine bills wisely. We are continuing with Washington Wine Month in March and reviewing Washington wines, and I would be amiss in my duty if I did not involve or put out Cabernet Sauvignon, an episode on Cabernet Sauvignon. You have to. It is the number one red wine in the United States. It dominates in Napa Valley and certainly in Bordeaux. Cab is the, one of the main grapes, especially on the left bank of Bordeaux. Many people just breaking into the wine world often go to Cabernet Sauvignon. They realize the respect that Cab has. So we're going to get started right off the bat with three different Washington cabs from three different vintages, which is kind of exciting to me. This is the Cosmic Egg Cabernet Sauvignon, $24. It is 2017. I believe this has 3% Malbec, 97% cab. This comes from a very familiar winery called North Star, and the winemaker is David Murfield. He refers to him, they call him Murph. He has his own line of wines called the Murph Wines. And he is the winemaker for this particular thing. And of course, kind of an interesting story, and I'm not going to go into deep detail about it, but there's some mythologies that says the universe originated from a cosmic egg. So they're going with that kind of theme. But interestingly, very cool label, by the way. I can get a closer look at that. Um, they use concrete and concrete eggs in their fermentation. So there's kind of a two-fold thing going on here, which is really cool. Let's look at the color of this 2017, the Cosmic Egg, Cabernet Sauvignon, 3%. So that's very dark. Purple, burgundy, dark. There you go. I'm going to bone up on my colors, guys. You see that better? A little bigger piece of paper here. Let's see what we get on the nose. Candied currants right off the bat. So being in the uh, egg vessels, uh, um, concrete egg vessels or even steel vessels, very minimal oak, if any oak on it at all. So this is an, this is allows the fruit to come out. 17 was a cooler vintage, so they had a longer ripening time. They were able to get out the character, characteristics of the wine. wasn't considered like a super great vintage only because they weren't able to produce some wines that, you know, really uh, generated some excitement right off the bat. Just like 11, 17 is taking longer for them to develop in the bottle. A little tobacco coming through as well. Really fruity on the nose. I get just a, a touch, a skosh of vegetation. Let's see what we get on the palate. The herbaceousness comes big time on the palate. Then there's just a touch of spice on the backside, which you know is interesting because you know spice usually comes from oak. This doesn't have oak treatment, so but there's a little touch of spice. Tobacco comes through on the back end, mostly. Current notes, front to finish, pretty intense wine, very intense wine, 24 bucks. Solid structured tannins, gives a little bit of a grip on the back side. I really like the tobacco notes on the back of the finish, mingled with the currants. And there's that just interesting herbaceousness that lurks in the background, front to finish. Reminds me a lot of an early Napa Valley cab, like in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they had a lot of that herbaceousness. Boy, really, that, I like that. Could be a little bit from the Cab Franc. Cab Franc is very, in a very herbaceous um, grape itself. Think of Loire, Loire Valley Cab Franc, and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a very, very solid 
Very nice wine. Feels a little warm on the palate. 14.5 alcohol. But still, very, very solid wine. Good complexity. I think that herbaceousness adds a level to it that is very interesting, but it's not over the top. So if you're into big, bold, fruit-forward style wines, you may not like this, but I think it's, it definitely could graduate you towards that style of wine. This reminds me a little bit of an old world wine with a little new world, well, big fat new world kiss, let's say. The current notes kind of expand on the mid palate, then morph into the finish into a more tobacco driven. And that, like I said, that vegetal character comes through, which I like. And it's very balanced in that way. So this is a very balanced, nicely integrated, well-made cab. And the price is right, $24. I think that's a, a really fair price for a cab of this style. I'm going to go B plus A minus on that. Speaking of cab in Washington State, you think of places like Cayuse, Quilcita Creek, Woodward Canyon, Leonetti, Lake Hole. These are all great wineries that have really put Cabernet Sauvignon from Washington on the map. And, you know, like Quilcita Creek, I don't know how many times they've gotten a 100-point score from the Wine Spectator and other uh, wine critics. I'm not a huge score guy, but that's, that's impressive. So this is the 2018. Again, you know how I feel about the 18 vintage. If you've been watching my program, 18 from Washington is a great vintage. Great in the essence of able to put out really um, uh, solid wines right off the bat. Whereas 17, you know, you kind of had to wait a little bit. It's, it, I'm sure the 17s are going to be beautiful like the 11s were or have become. $25 Luke Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley, Waluk Slope. That's where they get the name. Luke from Waluk Slope, 2018. Again, very cool label on this one. Let's see. Produced and bottled by... Doo -doo -doo. I believe they make their uh, their wine in the uh, Waluk Wine Company facility. It's a husband and wife team with a consulting winemaker. Let's see. Look at the color. Again, very dark. What you'd expect from Cab. Can't hardly see through it at all. Um, again... Just as dark as the cosmic egg. There you go. Let's see what we get on the nose. Deep current notes for sure. There's a candy-esque thing coming through on this one as well. A little vanilla, a little bit of mocha coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Solid current notes, but it doesn't go big fruit forward. This has good structure, good balance, like the Cosmic Egg. There is no vegetal herbaceous elements in this wine at all. It has a little bit of a, a dustiness to the tannins. The current notes expand on the mid palate, and then again, there's a nice tobacco element that comes through on the finish. The finish is lingering, even getting a little tar action. Like, you know, you know what I mean? When you smell tar, that tarry sort of uh, taste on the backside. Nice little grip on the finish. Now, after saying no abrasiveness, I got just a kiss of it on the backside. So for cab lovers, $25, $24, you have two great cabs representing Washington State. I like this one a lot. A little different. The herbaceousness is not there. But it has complexity, solid structure, good fruit, but balanced by tobacco elements that come through as well. I even get a touch, just barely, of black raspberry. And then there's just a 
tiny, tiny hit of bitterness on the back of the mid palate into the finish, but it's hardly noticeable. But that just says this guy needs a steak. I mean, it really is, These both of these are food wines, but this one really screams for some meat, you know, s s hamburger, roast, steak, anything like that would be great with this wine. Very solid effort. Now, I think that bitterness too, it might be that touch of herbaceousness just kind of sneaking in there, which gives it uh, complexity, which makes it very interesting. As you're tasting this wine, you're going, what is it? What is it? What? That's what I like about complexity. Sometimes I'll use the term, this wine is boring, meaning there's nothing really interesting in there. Just boom, blah. Whereas this one has a lot of interesting things. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go B plus A minus on that one as well. Nice job. Now let's move on. This is uh, Jones of Washington 2013 Jack's Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon. This is uh, Ancient Lakes of Columbia Valley. Yeah, this rolls in at $25. So Jack Jones, um, the Jones, it's a family owned winery. Um, Jack Jones uh, grew potatoes and corn and other things. And then in 1997, he decided to get into uh, viticulture. And in 2001, they produced their first wine. It was a Merlot that they released in 2003. Uh, Jones of Washington uh, uh, has some vineyards up in Mattawa. Most of their vineyards are on the Waluk Slope. This is from the Ancient Lakes. And this is a good color. A little lighter than the other two. It's a 13, which again was a great vintage in Washington State. Um, a little bit of a, yeah, just a touch of a brown on the edge of this one, but it, it's a lot lighter than the other two. Just a touch of brown on the edges. 13, it's only eight years old, so not that old. Let's see what we get on those. Boy, talk about the black tea, green tea, herbaceous. Definitely getting a little asparagus. Um, There's some current notes coming through as well. You start with my glass, why don't you, Stan? A little bark action on this one. Very interesting nose. It's dancing around on that nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is nice and polished. I mean, it has that nice current. Almost, I'm getting a little plum action on this one as well with the currants. Very smooth up front. And it's interesting, uh, after the mid palate, you know, it kind of goes through the mid palate, then all of a sudden this, this uh, vegetal sort of herbaceousness comes through. Actually, the vegetal kind of comes through. A little bit of a, maybe Brussels sprout, um, asparagus. Tobacco, big time tobacco. All three of these have tobacco on the finish, big time. I mean, it really morphs into this kind of tobacco current sort of action going on. And then just a tiny, tiny hit of that herbaceousness, that vegetal character comes through. Again, very interesting to see these three cabs. Now, even Luke showed a little bit of that veggie thing on the back side of the finish, or in the front of the finish, which was very curious, least of all the Luke. This one has more than Luke, less than the Cosmic Gag. Now, Nice complexity, nice balance, solid structured tannins, but they're smooth, 
They're smooth tannins, but they're, they're there. You can see them. They've got a little bit of attitude. In the background, they're like pushing and shoving just a little bit, giving you some attitude, but it's still a smooth cab. I'm really impressed with all three of these. I mean, you have a 13, not quite eight years old, but almost getting there. Um, a 17 and 18, all showing good. Having that tobacco, that complexity, all of those things you're looking for in a cab, they really remind me a lot, a lot, like I said, of the cabs in the, from Napa in the 80s where they had a lot of those characteristics. Very interesting to me to see that. Because when these were produced, are, are, are produced, you know, big fruit forward cabs were, you know, are still the thing. People like those big fruit forward cabs. And these guys are going old school a little bit, which I really, really like. Of course, Waluke Slope is a, one of the uh, top vineyards, viticulture areas in the state of Washington. In fact, I think it's just a little bigger than Napa Valley, just the Waluke Slope in Washington State. Nice, nice, nice cab. If you're looking for a fruit bomb, you'll get none of it from any of these. I'm going to go A minus A on the Jones of Washington cab. I just think it's a solid cab. They're all really good. Good, great, great scores. So, now, we're in the $25, $24 range. I know for some of you that's not chump change. I can appreciate that. But these are fairly priced. You try start going to Napa, you're going to pay a lot more than that for cabs of this quality. Just saying. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I appreciate it. Thanks for those of you who have subscribed. That list keeps going up and up. It just makes me feel good. It always makes me feel good when you subscribe. I put up episodes on Monday and Thursdays. So watch for those, and if you subscribe, you're going to see when those come out. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.